it turns out that the molecular shape affects the properties because with these shapes you can get polar or nonpolar bonds. For example, up here, if we if we look at, you know, let's just go back to electronegativity. All right. Let's let's just say carbon was 3.1 and oxygen was 3.2 and uh I just don't know what it was, but the, these guys are equal and opposite, right? So this thing is non polar. Right? This no molecular dipole, that means nonpolar. Now here's water though. And um if I haven't already shown you this demo of water being polar, you'll see it in class, right? This was the more negative side, this was the more positive side. You can see the little delta positive delta negative. So water is a polar thing. And what that does is that causes some properties uh to behave or it causes these molecules to behave a certain way. Remember what we said about uh ionic compounds, you like salt, right? Well, they were uh had a very high melting point and boiling point. And the reason it there what well the reason that is is because if you have two oppositely charged things next to each other, it's hard to pull those apart. And if you want to pull those things apart, you know, to get them sitting out here by themselves, you've got to put in a lot of energy cuz that's a real strong attraction, a positive and negative charge. Well, if I have something Oops, another phone call. Jeez. All right, so we've got, I'm trying to establish here that we've got these ionic compounds here are making uh, making those high melting points because it's really hard to pull apart. Well, if you've got something like this, okay, the polarity is going to gonna definitely affect uh, how hard it is to pull these apart. Imagine another water molecule like this, okay, this is a negative side. Let's say I have the positive side there. Let me keep the colors consistent, right? The negative side. And then here's, imagine those lined up, all right? Kind of like in a, whether it's a solid or they're kind of close to each other in a liquid. And you can imagine a whole bunch of those surrounded. It would be equally, well, not equally, but it would be also tough to pull those apart. So the shape of the molecule definitely and directly affects the polarity. And that is important because that affects melting point, boiling point, whether something's going to evaporate, how it will dissolve things, all sorts of interesting uh, properties. And so it's important that we realize when we look at these diagrams, who's polar or not, right? If this, if we have a tetrahedron shape and all these atoms are the same, it's nonpolar. But what if I said this end right here was a chlorine, right? But those all were H. Well, now you're talking about a structure that's, um, pardon me, I, I, I messed up. This is polar if those are all the same uh, atom that's nonpolar, okay? This thing right here, just because of this electron pair, is going to be polar, no matter what. Same with this. It's going to be polar. This thing, it depends on what these outside atoms are. If they're all the same, nonpolar, but let's say we have a chlorine there instead, now it's polar. Same thing with something linear. Uh, linear. If we're talking about like H, C, N, remember when we drew that? Oops, that's a terrible N. <coughs> <coughs> that would be a polar thing. So this polarity has a lot to do with the property. So it's important that we understand the shapes and understand are we going to have a polar end or not. Oops. And so this is the important thing. Nonpolar molecules have weak attractive forces, but polar molecules have strong attractive forces. And what that means is if you have uh if you have a weak attractive force, you have a low Boiling point, low melting point, uh, you evaporate easily, OK? 
okay, and other other properties. And so this is one of the reasons why water is such an amazing thing. It's a polar molecule, and so it takes a lot of energy to to boil it. Um, if you've ever watched a pot boil, it takes a long time. But if you were to put a, a pot of rubbing alcohol on the stove, please don't do that, by the way, you would find that it boils rather quickly, okay? And that's because, uh, well... That's probably not a good a good example, but the the attractive forces are less for the rubbing alcohol than the water. So that's why shapes are important. This this really has to these properties really uh, or these bonds really affect the properties. So let's look at this last thing because I want this is the practical stuff I want you to be able to do. I want to give you a molecule, ask you to draw the structure with the Lewis dot structure. Using the Vesper theory, predict the shape of each one. Okay, so let's try it. SCl2. Well, I'm going to put S in the middle with its six valence electrons, right? There we go. Here comes chlorine with its seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here comes chlorine also with its seven valence electrons, right? Now, let me ask you this. What kind of uh, shape is that? Hopefully you didn't say linear, right? Because it's not. Yeah, it looks like it's linear, but look at these two things right here. What do we have right here? Non-bonded pairs of electrons. So those are going to fill up the space of that tetrahedron, right? So what you're going to have is you're going to have this bent shape, right? Those are going to take the shape of that tetrahedron. These four bonded, re, uh, these four sets of electrons, and so you're going to get a bent shape, right? Let's do the next one. If you want to pause and then see if you get it right, by all means, do so. All right, here's carbon in the middle, right? Four valence electrons, and if you don't mind, guys, I'm not going to draw these ones on the outside. Okay, I'm going to be a little lazy here just because of time. So here's a chlorine. Right, here's a chlorine, here's a chlorine, and here's a chlorine, right? Four bonded atoms, all the same, next to it. What's that going to be? Tetrahedron. By the way, I should have said bent. Okay, and then last but not least, SO3. S in the middle. Double bond, O, O, and O. All right, what's this going to be? Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Notice this is not sulfite. If it was, it would be a little different. Now, just as a quick review, what kind of angle are we going to get here between these guys? 104.5. What kind of angle here? 109.5, and what kind of angle here? That's the only one I can really draw, 120. All right, so there you have the quick and dirty Vesper theory, uh, why, it, uh, why molecules, uh, why their shape affects their properties, and we will do an activity in the lab where we'll play with this stuff and try and uh, uh, see it in action. Oh, again, like always, if you have questions, please ask me tomorrow. See you later. Bye.